I'd like to buy the world a home and furnish it with love. Grow apple trees and honeybees and snow white turtle doves. I like to teach the world to sing. Sing with me. Perfect harmony. Perfect harmony. I like to buy the world a cloak and keep it company. Things happened in 1972, our senior year at Lou Wallace High School, our final go-around. Twelve years have gone by, and that quickly, you're ready to take the next step. Then bang, before you know it, it's time for your 50th reunion. Presented by the Lou Wallace 50th Year Reunion Committee to be held October 8th at the Innsbruck Country Club in Merrillville. If you're a member of the class of 1972, take the time and reach out to our classmates. 50 for 50, $50 for our 50th reunion. Time is running out, so let's reminisce. Lou Wallace had a rebuild during our four years. The new athletic stadium was erected. Goodbye Gilroy Stadium. With a seating capacity of 7,000, provided home territory for football games, track meets, and halftime activities. On a hot 90 degree night, wilting mums and a standing room only crowd, a zero to zero score. And at halftime, Joanne Swigen was crowned homecoming queen in the fall of 71, the beginning of our final year. Daddy, don't you walk so fast. I'll just use you, then I'll set you free. Baby, baby, don't get hooked on me. As the first few flakes of snow hit the ground, that winter mixed emotion of joy and unhappiness settled over the student body. The sights and sounds of winter brought frowns to the pessimists and the realists, who could only envision the wind in sub-zero temperatures and inches of snow that had to be shoveled. But Lou Wallace students seemed to favor the optimistic view, with lunch hours filled with snowball fights, slides over the snow, and of course, snow angels. Nixon wins re-election in a landslide victory and immediately looks to the future. Here's the 1-1 one -one pitch. Into the dirt! Numbers too big to ignore, and I know too much to go back and pretend. Cause I've heard it all before, and I've been down there on the floor. No one's ever gonna keep me down again. That winter, the new Richard F. Polk gym was dedicated. Goodbye Memorial Auditorium, Bailey Junior High, 
or anywhere else the Hornet sports teams played during those construction years. The entire community became a part as students and parents poured into the state-of-the-art facility to cheer on the Hornet Cagers and the other school teams who welcomed the new addition. In 1972, the Hornets hosted the Hobart Brickies at their basketball homecoming in the new Polk Gymnasium. Tension and excitement were at an all-time high as Bobby Buchanan was crowned homecoming queen during the half. Unfortunately, the Hornets fell to the area's top-ranked Brickies by 13, but another enjoyable night in our new home. Say hello, say hello. Pop and fresh Danish rolls. Danish rolls just taste better when you bake them up fresh and hot. Try Pillsbury Danish in the dairy case. It's such a nice, such a nice feeling. Get to know the Pop and Fresh Dough. <laughs> the student council once again sponsored the annual inaugural, and it turned out to be a huge success. Over 100 couples attended and truly enjoyed the alpine haze atmosphere of pine trees and tissue paper snowflakes that transformed the old gym into the beautiful white mountainsides of Switzerland. Following the dance, the music of Mother Goose provided entertainment from the second floor surge area for after party refreshments. Lean on me when you're not strong. The first turnabout of the school year was sponsored by the Girls Club in November. The theme was Fantasyland. Do you remember these two, Frank Bravo and Tony Nazulowski? The Booster Club held the second in March as an entertaining climax to Spirit Week, with couples surrounded by murals of the well-known Love Is cartoons. The event was held in the old gym, and entertainment provided by Heavy Black Challenge. company in the water bill here. Look at this, $16.80. Lucky me, I got the only Polak who showers regularly. <laughs> here and thanks for your trouble. 50 cents, some thanks. Wait a minute, you don't like it? Let me see it. I like it. I'll tell you what, since you don't like it and I do, why don't I just keep it? <laughs> So from what I remember, the senior class was in the red coming into the 71-72 school year. But that changed quickly when the upperclassmen sponsored a pro wrestling meet with stars like Chief Billy Red Cloud, Moose Cholak, Dick the Bruiser, amongst others. Needless to say, 5,000 fans packed the Newport Gymnasium, and the class netted $2,100 for the upcoming prom. A lot of money back then. Then in late April, the inevitable happened. A 22-day teacher strike that loomed possible from day one of our senior year. 
Superintendent Dr. Gordon McAndrew and Teachers Union President Sandra Irons would bump heads for three weeks until a close vote opened the doors of the Gary Public Schools. And for us seniors, the home stretch. due to the teacher strike, which cut off communications between classes and students. But thanks to our dedicated sponsors, committee chairman, and the class officers who came together and managed to hold the junior and senior prom in spite of all the inconveniences. The prom was a good one, held at the Serbian Hall in Merrillville from 8 to 11, where juniors and seniors in formal attire danced to the music of the Bob Wilson Orchestra. The fun continued the next morning as couples headed to Warren Dunes, Turkey Run, and Indiana Beach to complete the late May weekend. Never in the history of Lou Wallace have Senior Week activities gained as much publicity as in 1972. The traditional SOT, or some call it TP night, was canceled due to expenditures that occurred following the celebration the previous year. So the administration and student body agreed to replace SOT night with a senior ditch day. A great decision as seniors flocked to the beaches and the start of the Memorial Day weekend.
graduation at Lou Wallace had a new look in 1972. For the first time, a graduating class conducted both the baccalaureate and commencement in the new Polk Gymnasium. Thursday, June 15th was the night 481 graduates had been anticipating for four years. Clad in black caps and gowns for the first time in Lou Wallace history, the graduates filed into the gym with poise and precision as the orchestra played the traditional pomp and circumstances. Salutatorian Adrian Chirilla addressed the crowd, followed by cheers of mixed emotions as the graduates moved their tassels to the words, the class of 72 is now graduated.